Hey, y'all, good morning. I hope y'all feeling great. It's a nice day today. It's a little cool, but it's nice. Let me say this right here off of my Facebook post. And, uh, you know, I don't try to come on here and try to demonize anybody. But I'll demonize a demon. You don't have to demonize people that do demon-ish things, okay? Let me say this right here. You know, it's already hard suffering a loss. And now, you got to ask for grandparent rights. Now, y'all probably seen a lot of my videos of my granddaughter, my granddaughter in the swimming pool or whatever. You know, it ain't like she come over here and spend the weekend or spend the night. You know, the, the, every time she come over here, it's always supervised. You know, I don't know, you know, and I get it. Some people just ain't comfortable with their child staying nowhere or spending the night at their grandparents' house or whatever. Uh, you know, we have a nice environment. We have been nice to her. We gave my granddaughter uh, a baby shower uh, that my mama threw at her house. We gave her a few birthday parties in three years. I know we gave her at least two of them. Uh, birthday party, the last birthday party was up at the jumping gym. And one before that, we always have her and Grayson birthday party together. Her and Grayson always take their Christmas pictures together. And last year, if you look at the videos and pull it up, she was here when the Easter Bunny came. Now, Brandon passes away. And, uh, you know, whenever you ask her to see the baby, Sometimes she will and sometimes she won't. It just depends on what day it is and what mood she in. If, if she in the mood for, for you to see her, you will see her. If she in the mood. If she ain't in the mood for you to see her, then you won't see her. She tired. She went to sleep last night. She got a cold. We got Tylenol. We got children's Tylenol over here. I done raised, all, I done raised 15, 20 kids in this house. We know how to how to treat a cold, give us, give us her medicine and let us spend weekend because you ain't, you hurting her. You hurting her. The best thing ever happened to me was having, was having my grandparents uh, uh, around and just having wonderful grandparents. That was one of the best things that ever happened to me. That's how, who I became, who I am, was, was my grandparents. I get up, I go to work every day. I'm a responsible man, you know, uh, yeah, I'm not liked by everybody. That's the way it's supposed to be or whatever. But <laughs> that's a whole nother conversation or whatever. But I just, you know, I'm just a man to just stand up, stand up for what's right. Now, think about this, the psychology of the whole thing. The baby three years old, the baby three years old, she don't even understand that her dad died. She three years old. She at the funeral. She looking at me. She emulating me or imitating me or whatever, at, at the funeral, she don't know what's going on. All she know is her papa love her. She would have she would have knew her dad, and she wouldn't allow, and my son had a court order by a judge. So you dealing with somebody that don't respect court orders. The judge gave him, uh, I think, two weekends out of the month and every other Wednesday or something like that, and four weeks in the summer, and he did... Uh, uh, everything from the guardian that light him was clean and clear and set up or whatever, even if he had issues. He ain't finna do nothing, mistreat his daughter. You know what I'm saying? And you think that, and I just I just didn't like it. So we had her over here and, and visiting with her and we were always nice to her, to, to the young lady, to the, uh, my granddaughter's mother, we was always nice to her. You know, regardless of how we felt because I love my my granddaughter more than I disliked the things that she was doing to my son. I went down there and paid his attorney fees for him. Cause this shit was them, this, this shit was 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 seven grand, seven thousand five hundred dollars. I went down there and paid his attorney fees for him to give him the best chance to fight in court and to fight to have access to his daughter. He deserved that. He didn't do nothing. My son didn't do nothing so bad that he couldn't spend time with his daughter. He didn't do nothing that was so bad that he couldn't spend time with his daughter. And it's just low down when women do stuff like this to men. 
And there's women out here that, would, that wish anybody would step up and offer some kind of support. And I'm not mad about it because, hey, it's disappointing. It's hurtful. But you hurting her. I'm mad at the fact that my granddaughter is suffering. She couldn't have. We had an Easter egg hunt over here yesterday. We had a big Easter party. We had church in the backyard. We had good food that I personally went in there and cooked. I cooked Sunday dinner. You know, and Miss Gail and Mr. Kirk did Friday and Saturday. We had karaoke. She got another three-year-old cousin that she never met that was here. Grayson was here. The baby was here. Denver, she loved the baby. You take her away from all of that? Because I filed for grandparent rights. And grandparent rights only give you maybe a couple of weekends out of the month. Her attorney asked her, hey, would you give him one weekend? She said, no. <laughs> he said, why? She couldn't even tell him. See, you're dealing with people that's not reasonable. And I hold her parents accountable, who she live with. The last time my son spoke to his daughter was through a goddamn ring camera. A ring camera. But I got to be nice and I can't say nothing because I don't want to make her mad. Every time she came over here, I said, hey, do you think he can come over here and maybe y'all can meet up and make it gradual, you know, or meet up at my mom's house because you comfortable over there and where she can get to know him or whatever. None of it. None of it. But God damn it, I'm, I'm a whole nother nigga. I ain't, got, I ain't got nothing but time. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, we gonna roll, we gonna roll through there, or whatever. And I'm, I'm just trying to do what's what's in the best interest of her. And the best interest of her is to know her family. And it ain't no perfect family, no perfect family structure. But ain't nobody ever was raised in this house, uh, 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 got abused, or or mistreated, or anything. It was discipline and structure. We ain't play no game. We don't let kids do what they want to do over here and throwing tantrums and all that kind of stuff and falling out and whatever. I'm good with, with two and three-year-olds that be throwing them little tantrums and stuff. I know how to get them up and talk to them and put a little fear in them and say, hey, this behavior is not okay. Get yourself together and stuff, you know? And I just I just feel... Sorry about that. I got cut off. But I, I, just, I just feel terrible, terrible about it. And I feel terrible for any man that have to go through stuff like this or any grandparent. You know how grandparents, do, do anybody want to know how grandparents' rights started? There was a soldier in the state of Alabama that's from the state of Alabama that went out and served this country and got killed in either Iraq or Afghanistan. But the wife hated the mother-in-law. So by the wife hating the mother-in-law, she decided that she was not going to allow the uh, she was not going to allow the mother-in-law to have access to the kids. So she filed, and it went all the way to the uh, to the state supreme court, and that's how it became a law in the state of Alabama called grandparents' rights law, and that's how it got started. And it's sad. That you have to even have uh, stuff like that. It's sad that you got to sit up here and have uh, laws in place because people should naturally do what's in the best interest of a child or whatever. So it is what it is. We here. Here's where we are. This is what's happening. And we're just going to deal with it. And come hell or high water. And I'm going to tell you something. It's a lot of women hate this video. You hate men. First of all, you hate men. And first of all, you hate a man that's confident and that will stand up and don't give a shit and do what's right and will take it to anybody. And the women that hate men like that, they don't have no men in their family and they, that's operating in any type of leadership. Whatever kind, whatever you are, that's fine. Not on this, on here to be liked. The, pe the people that matter like me. That's all that matters. The people that matter. You don't matter. And it's not woman bashing. There's a lot of good women out here that do the right thing. And there's a lot of good women out here that need support and don't have it. But then there are women out here that that that, that use children as puns to get back with somebody, to get back at somebody you don't like. 
or get back at somebody you disagree with. And it ruined kids' lives. It divides families. It mess up kids' lives. And it's low down. It's spiteful. It's nasty. It's reckless. And you don't love your child. If he got a, a, a grandfather that, that, that got, that, that have won all, regardless of, of what I've done and my accomplishments, forget what I've done and fame and popularity and all that stuff. Man, I'm a, I'm, I'm, man, I go in there and cook for my grandkids. I feed my grandkids. I cook myself. I push them on the swing. I teach them how to swim. I jump on the trampoline with them. I got all kinds of stuff. My granddaughter got a brand new Jeep in there that she ain't even rode yet because the other one broke down. She got a brand new one in there. And she can't ride because you mad. You mad at me because I asked for our grandparent rights. Ain't nobody finna sit up here and be hoping and praying and keep our fingers crossed. And, and you text back when it's convenient for you. You, she don't, you don't work anywhere. You don't work nowhere. You don't have a job. And we text you and you talking about you was busy. Busy doing what? You don't work. You don't work nowhere. I'm talking about you sell jewelry online. We text you, you text back two days later. You need to let me know. Busy doing what? And, that, and that's what we have to deal with. You know, and I always fought for my kids. I don't, I don't mind, I don't like going to court. I, I don't like it at all. Because you got, you got low down ass guardian that light them. Low down ass judges that hate men. Oh, I had one. Her name was Elise Barclay. I thought she was she hated men, and I thought she was racist. But real nice on the on the bench, being being nice, nasty, and condescending, sucking on a. We was in court. She was sucking on a lolly, a charms blow pop, and this black man coming in here asking for rights to a child taking this poor woman through all of this stuff and the only thing I'm asking for is the courts to be fair so I can have access to my goddamn kids and all these men out here doing what they want to do and here go a man trying to be responsible when I tell you the system is racist but you got a lot of black judges on the bench and uh, uh, black and white and, and I, uh, I tell you who probably some of the judges that's most fair Probably some of the white men that are judges that 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 have gotten fair judgments. I'm pulling weeds while I'm talking to y'all. Have gotten fair judgments. It's just some low down, some low down folks or whatever. You got a judge that been mistreated by a man. You can kiss uh, uh, anything being fair in court goodbye. <laughs> you can kiss that goodbye. It ain't happening. It ain't happening. Not trying to sound better, not coming off as bitter or whatever, but I'm a fighter and I've been a fighter all my life. People know my background, where I come from or whatever. You know, how the hell did I get here and get get in this kind of position to be to be doing and accomplishing some of the things that I'm doing and accomplishing? You know, by stepping up, you know, being a man. We done raised kids. I got kids in the house. I got kids in the house right now that's here from out of town that never had a dad. Never. Don't know what it's like to have a dad, but they all here. Because they found, they saw a father figure in me, and they all came home for Easter. All of them almost in their 20s and 30s. And successful, and there's a bunch of degrees on the wall. And that's just, that's just what it is. So, you know, uh, hey. I'm going to be doing more stuff for father's rights, stuff for grandparent rights, and uh, just like Dr. King. Oh, don't say nothing. Don't just pray and give it over to God. Man, forget that. Faith without works is dead. Faith without works is dead. You going to pray. You going to pray and ask God to help you with, 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 with your issues and help you to see your kid or grandkid, but you don't go and file for rights and do everything that you can do legally. God got judges and lawyers set up for you to have the best chance to do what you need to do. Yeah, he sure does. <laughs> so, it is what it is. And it's going to be what it's going to be. 
But yeah, shout out this morning. Yeah, I feel a certain way because there was no reason for my granddaughter not to be able to come over here. We haven't seen her. We just had a loss. We just had a loss. The only thing my son left on this earth was some clothes, some paperwork, some bills, and his daughter that looked just like him and a, and, and a family calls to see the daughter to get to bring some kind of comfort to them because we can't love on Brandon. We can at least love on his seed that you laid down and had with him. But I find it interesting, like I say one time, and I say it again, he was good enough to tap into the most intimate part of your body, but he wasn't good enough for you to extend the courtesy and do the right thing and allow him to be a father. Not good enough to be a father, but he was good enough to satisfy your need. To touch the one spot that's covered up. The one spot in your body, when you go to the beach, you got three things covered up, both your breasts and that, but you let him tap into that, right? But he's not good enough to be a dad. You gave him, you gave him our last name. You gave her our last name, S-M-I-L-E-Y. But now she's not good enough to come over here and be with the smileys. How about that? Think about, think about that for a minute. All these women on this timeline right now wish a man would step up to the plate or show up to a graduation or an Easter play or show up to something. Oh, yeah. Yeah, he good, he, 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 he good enough to tap. Tap into that most intimate spot. And then he come over there to see his kid that he, you didn't, you didn't get that kid by yourself. Wait man, these kids don't belong to you. They're not property. They're not yours only. He gave you the seed to have a kid. He, the man. Yeah. Oh, no, fret not. No. Mm -mm. I'm standing up. I'm standing up for father's rights. Just like I stand up for civil rights. I believe in civil disobedience. When white, when black people mistreated by, by white police officers and everything that's going on with, with, with systemic racism and, and stuff and everything that's going on in the system, I'm also going to stand up for men that's trying to be men that's trying to be a good dad. And then when they become teenagers and you can't do shit with them, then you want to call the dad. You need to come get him. He over here, he hard-headed, he won't put his pants up. He's sitting out there smoking black and mild. He want to hang with his friend. But the nigga try to come around when he got two, three, and four. You deny him visitation, don't let him see the kid. Right? When the baby was cute, then you're going to go put two earrings on him, kissing him in the mouth, keeping him away from their dad, talk about the dad like a dog. But then when he gets 16, you can't do shit with him. He's facing death or facing life in prison. Because either he didn't win and killed somebody or then got killed. Just riding. Riding to the core. Riding and low down to the core. Any woman that'll do that to a man. Do you know little girls get their confidence from their dads? They get confident. It's a lot of stuff that dads can give little girls that a woman can't give. And same thing, especially if they got a son. You can't teach them how to, how to be a man. Go, go look at the statistics and see what the see how it is when when the kid have have an active father and what their chances are at life. Look at my chance with my granddad. If it weren't for my granddad, I would not be where I am. If it weren't for my granddad, Ernest Smiley, my mama had sense enough. Well, I'm gonna take you over there. Yes, ma'am. Let's go. Mama be like, you ain't called your granddad. When the last time you talked to? I said I talked to him. Get your ass in there and get on that phone and call your granddaddy right now as good as he is to you. You ain't call your granddaddy in four days to see how he doing. You crazy? I thank my mama, man. My mama pushed me over there to my grandfather. And then, then sent me to Cleveland to be with my other granddad, Alan Bush. I was spent, spent about three, four weeks in Cleveland every summer as a kid. But that's all right. It's been, what is this, April? February. 
March, April. I haven't seen my granddaughter in almost two months. Almost two months. For what? For what? What, what, what? what do we do? I file for grandparent rights now. We can't get a return text message. I'm going to screenshot the text message. I sent pictures of the G. Hey, I'm going to show you how reasonable my text messages are. How encouraging trying to encourage co-parenting. But you, we dealing with one that, that don't respect. Now, she don't give a fuck about no judge. Shit. A judge, a judge give a, a clear court order. Man, one thing about, about her, she don't give a damn what a judge say. Basically, every, every circuit court judge and family court judge in Birmingham, Alabama, I promise you, she don't give a damn about what you say or what you think or what order. And 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 I and, and she don't believe that you'll put her in jail for disobeying a court order. She don't believe you. You ain't going to do nothing to her. It ain't a judge that's, that's watching this video will put her in jail. I You ain't going to do it because she violated a court order. Yep, she she never allowed him to see. She did not follow that court order one time because she know that it ain't a judge. Uh, it ain't a judge in Jefferson or Shelby County that will lock her ass up for violating the court order. Oh yeah, but you'll lock a man up though for not paying child support. But you won't lock a woman up for for violating a court order. <laughs> No, nope, it's not one judge. Show me where a judge didn't lock the woman up for violating the court order. Show me because I need to see it. But I don't believe it's one in Jefferson County that'll do it. I don't think so. And she don't think so. Let's go. All right, y'all have a blessed day. Peace.